The PeaksQ module has an intuitive, accurate, and sensitive approach to silent quantification. This video will take you through some of the key features in the algorithm that allow you to accurately quantify differences between samples using stable isotope labeling. I'll also walk you through setup and analysis of silic labeled data with Peaks. Three unique features set Peaks silic apart. Our peptide feature detection takes into account factors unique to silic, such as isotope charge distribution, MS1 peak intensity correlation over a retention time range, and expected mass shifts caused by labeling. These details are also used to calculate a quality score, allowing you to make sure only good quality labeled peptides are quantified. Also, using retention time alignment, transfer of IDs across samples to similar peptide features is possible. Perhaps most importantly, PQ for Silac includes an intuitive interface that allows you to easily visualize and understand your quantification results. I'll take you through a quantification project in Peaks to show how to set up and interpret a Silac project. First, let's take a look at how Peaks accurately predicts Silac feature groups. There are certain characteristics you can use to distinguish Silac feature groups from the rest of the LCMS data. First, are the peptide features separated by the expected mass difference and within the expected mass error? Do they share similar intensity profile across the retention time range? Also, are they the same charge? Meaning, do they have similar isotopic distribution? Considering this information, silic feature groups are accurately found. These details are also used to generate a quality score for each peptide. So, are we able to accurately predict peptide feature ratios with this method? Benchmarking shows we can. Here we analyzed the data set with known ratios and compared it to max quant. The x-axis shows the log 2 ratio, and the y-axis shows the number of feature groups with that ratio. The feature groups with that ratio. The green lines show the expected ratio. Peaks was able to accurately match the expected ratio consistently. The next important improvement to our method was peptide ID transfer to limit missing values. To deal with this, Peaks uses peptide ID transfer. The first application of this is in peptide feature pairs. For example, here, even though an identified MSMS scan wasn't found in the heavy peptide feature, it could be transferred from the light peptide feature. So, quantification within the sample could be performed. Also, ID transfer can be done across samples. Here, Replicate 1 doesn't have an MSMS spectrum associated with it, but Replicate 2 does. By aligning the retention time of the peptide feature pairs between the replicates, the ID from Replicate 2 is transferred to Replicate 1. So, quantification can still be performed on Replicate 1, and a missing value is avoided. You can tell which run the ID was transferred from using the All Vectors button in the Peptide tab. The matching runs will have the same minus 10 log P score, M over Z, charge, PPM mass error, and retention time. Now that we've seen how Peaks accurately quantifies peptide feature pairs from Silic experiments, let's put it into practice. First, let's take a look at a typical quantification experiment, comparing treated samples to control samples to find proteins that show significant change. Here, cells were grown in the presence of angiotensin II and compared to a control data set. In three replicates, the treated samples were grown in the presence of the heavy silic label. In one replicate, the control was labeled with a heavy silic label. This method can be set up in Peaks easily. First, create a project by going to the top left corner of the screen and clicking the New Project button. Then, add the data from each replicate to a new sample as shown here. At this point, only the enzyme inch type need to be given as parameters. Then, continue through data refinement, then identification. If you're using this project creation wizard, you don't need to add the labels as PTMs. When you set up the quantification parameters in the next step, the PTMs will be added. In this case, a new method was added. To add a new method, go to Configuration, then Labeled Q Method, and click the New button in the top right-hand corner. Select Precursor Quantification from the Method Type drop-down menu. Then, add rows to add labels. Naming here is important, because all labels with the same name will be added together. In this case, light is unlabeled, and the heavy labels are R6 and K8. Coming back to the project creation wizard, at the quantification step, select precursor ion quantification from the left. Then, select the label method from the top drop-down menu. Is that the retention time? 
This is the maximum allowable retention time shift between the heavy and the light label. 20 seconds is usually enough. Also, it's best to only allow peptides within a 1% false discovery rate to be used for quantification. Below the parameters, you can organize your experiment. Remembering this experiment's design, each of the four samples is a replicate. So, add them all to the same group by holding shift and selecting all the files. Click the top blue button to add the samples to the right. In the bottom left, you can rename the conditions. Then, specify which condition is associated with the light label and which condition is associated with the heavy label. The lightest label is always shown on top. This is a useful way to organize the display because, in this case, the fourth replicate was reversed and the light label is the treated sample and the heavy is the control. Peaks will account for this. The last step is to make sure the reference sample is set accurately. It will be used as the denominator of the protein ratios. Now we can take a look at the results. The first thing you'll see is a heat map showing which proteins are upregulated and downregulated. By default, red means upregulated and green means downregulated. This can be adjusted if you prefer in the preferences menu. But how can we make sure that the proteins that we're reporting have real change between the conditions? We can have some filters that can make sure that your results are accurate. First, check the feature vector filters. Feature vectors are groups of peptide features used for quantification. In this case, it's the combination of the heavy and the light peptide features for one peptide. Here, we have some filters based on peptide details that have been found to produce more reliable quantification results. The top is the minus 10 log P of the identification result, set to 1% FDR. It's best to make sure only well-identified peptides are used for quantification. The second is quality, which calculates the reproducibility of the peptide feature between the different labels. It considers features such as the isotope intensity profile, elution profile, and mass shift. You can set a minimum area filter. Since more intense peptide features are more reproducible, it's best to limit quantification to higher intensity features. 1E4 generally can be used as a cutoff, but this can vary between instruments and projects. A charge filter is given because peptides with a charge in the range of two to six are more reproducible. You can also require that the reference channel be present, require MSMS identifications, or require that a certain number of labels are present for each peptide. Next, you can set the protein filters. The most important is the significance. This is a statistic that, deter this is a statistic that determines how likely the change that's observed is caused by more than random chance. We use minus 10 log p, so a significance filter of 20 equals a p-value of 0.01 or less. This represents a less than 1% chance that the change that's observed is random. If one group is used, such as in this case, a paired t-test is used to calculate significance. If more than one group is used, such as a super silic experiment, ANOVA is used to calculate significance. You can use FDR instead, which is calculated using an adjusted p-value. Modified form exclusion is also included as an option to increase accuracy. If both an unmodified and modified form of a peptide are found, the total abundance of the peptide is split into two features, so it's best to remove it from the protein quantification. Once you set these filters, you can be confident that the proteins and peptides shown in the protein peptide table are accurate. The next step is to check the normalization settings. By default, the total intensity of all quantifiable peptides are used to normalize each sample to a one-to-one -one ratio across the whole experiment. Use the drop-down menu to see the normalization ratios for each sample. Other options are available, such as normalized to spike, referring to a spiked-in protein. A list of all quantifiable proteins will be displayed. Select a protein or group of proteins that you know of a certain ratio and enter the expected ratio in the expected ratio field. Then apply the changes. The manual normalization option allows you to give an expected ratio if you don't expect that the ratio between the samples will be one to one. Here in the protein table, you can see the quantification details of any of the proteins that pass the filters on the summary page. The heat map displays the ratio of each replicate's treated sample relative to the control. 
So these proteins are consistently upregulated relative to the control. The significance column gives the significance of the quantification result. The minus 10 log p column gives the significance of the identification result. Select a protein to see its peptide details. Its position in the volcano plot will also be highlighted in blue. Double click on a peptide to see the peptide details. Here in the peptide tab, you can see all of the important details of a peptide's quantification in one page. The top table gives a quality score, heat map, and ratio of the peptide. The bottom four figures show the best annotated MSMS spectrum to give an idea of the identification quality. A heat map of the actual peptide features shows the actual data used for quantification. The pink shape shows the area determined to be the boundary of the feature. This information is used to create the XIC curve showing the area used to quantify the peptide in the bottom right. A slice of the MS full scan left. This page makes it really easy to make sure the peptides passing the filters are trustworthy. Once you're sure that the quantification results are accurate, go back to the summary page, click the export button, and different HTML and text options are available for you to export your data for further analysis. You're now ready to try Peak Silac quantification with your data. You can try a free demo of Peaks at bioin4.com. If you have any questions, send us an email at support at bioin4.com.